uh, tokens. Okay. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. And thank you. Yeah, I uh, I looked long and hard for uh, squirrels that were going to, you know, be fitting of having a little bit of background and story and all of that. And so, you know, uh, getting everybody Luna, Secret, Shadow. You know, getting them all set up and then the babies back at, at home, too. You know, it's just uh, something that was uh, a little bit fun to to do. But uh, anyway, welcome back, everyone. I am, as always, the Dungeon Master. And today we are rejoining the party of Dragons of the Frozen Sea and Jalivi, Scotty, Ulf, Eric, their animal companions, Star and Viter, along with their friends slash mounts, Shadow and Secret, the Gigantian squirrels that are the mate and son of the Lord of all squirrels, and together... They have traversed the glacial ravines, escaped the winter wolves that were chasing them, and now, up ahead, have spotted what remains of Scotty's once proud tribe, and it doesn't look like much. You guys have already passed by several bodies and have been following the trail now for days, so... You are tired, but, you know, not exhausted, but you can see from their walk that everybody is, like, dying off as, as if the bodies that you encountered weren't evidence enough. You can now see the survivors are near death. Is it possible for Jillivy or Scotty to hail them? Have they seen us? They haven't seen you because they've been mostly just uh, trudging forward, almost like a a zombie, you know, forced march, just slowly pushing themselves forward closer and closer to death with every step. Jillivy, you have a better voice and such. Uh, I'm gonna roll perception real quick, just see, to see what I see around here. I am going to um, call in the distance. Say, Uncle, is that you? As you call out, it is incredibly dark, and the snow that is constantly falling seems to kind of pick up there there is so much snow falling that although the wind hasn't really gotten any louder it's almost like a sound dampening barrier the further your voice tries to travel the more dense snow it has to try to travel through and it just kind of fades out you scream into the snowy void you can see their light and and the shadow of of um hold on i'm gonna try and pronounce this give me a second to refresh myself Cool Tannin Karhu. And that is actually um, Finnish for the Golden Bear, the chieftain of the Angel Grundian tribes, is a great, huge, 
seven foot tall, maybe even a little bit taller, maybe seven three, broad shouldered giant of a man who leads his people with brute force but also with a great amount of charisma and he is descended they say from the frost giants that they eventually drove away when when they turned on the gods the the giants not not you guys you guys worship the gods Okay. Scotty, uh, do your people have any way to um, signal from long distances? Aha! I have a whistle arrow. I think I'm going to draw it and I'll shout out to Jilvi and Scotty. Do you want me to signal? Yes, yes, yes uh, let them know we're here. Yeah, we need I, was thinking, too. But we have, I was thinking of flares, but a whistle would be better. Less attention. I'll... Uh, Pick my target carefully to aim towards where I believe no one is, and uh, but to shoot it over their heads, and I'll let it fly. The arrow flies over their heads, and as it does so, they can hear a high-pitched whistling. They turn around, and Kultanen rushes forward ready to defend what is left of his people as the peasants get behind his warriors he takes the front and readies to battle whatever is coming up as he turns and starts to stare us down i will i will say uncle it is your daughter and niece we are we've come to find you he still can't hear you. He can't even see you guys unless you have a light source. Scotty would like to spend its work. Do we? Does anyone have an easy way to make a? Light? I can do. I can do magic if no one else can. Says yes, Scotty. Um, I can do spellcraft. It. I can do spellcraft and see if I can change to to silent message for um touch of fatigue. I have flair as a cantrip. Now I'm oh, gonna. Let's I'm do gonna that. Try. Go ahead, flare it. Scotty will take off her hood and expose her head so that they can see from a distance. Do the same. What do you Jennifer. think would be better, flare or light? Light. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast light uh, on, I guess, my quarterstaff. Let there be light. All right, so as Eric's staff begins to glow, Scotty steps forward to the edge of the light and Kultanin sees Come, for the first time in almost a year his daughter scotty and he drops his axe in the snow and comes forward greetings father but keep your axe to hand uncle we are safe we've come to find you and and uh help you in your quest to to save our people, what's left of them. He still can't hear you, but he sees Jalivi as she steps forward and his booming voice comes over the snow. Jalivi! I thought you were gone for. We had to press on. No, Uncle, these kind adventurers found me and, and sheltered me, and, and they happened to be with Scotty, and we're, we've been reunited for some time now. We came looking for you. 
I call out to everybody to come on and stay together. Come on, Feeter and Jilly V. And hopefully, hopefully the squirrels will come too, but just keeping in the back. As soon as we're in hearing distance of, of him, Scotty will yell out, the squirrels are with us. They helped carry us to you, I say. They helped us find you because we would have probably never found you without them. They're very quick and helpful. I call for Vitor to uh, come on as well. Oh, Vitor's yeah. still in his, like, all up in his chest about staying near you. Like, if, if you get too far away, he starts to whine. S Star, on the other hand, is taken to the air and is circling above us, keeping watch. The snow is falling hard. Star will need to make a strength check to remain airborne. Nope. As soon as Star realizes that, Star says, I'm not going anywhere, and stays under Scotty's hood. Yeah, it's the snow. It's not that it's so windy. It's that the snow is falling heavy now. I ask, uh, Uncle, where are you headed? To the giant's graveyard. The last battle of the Dawn War was fought between the primordial forces and the forces of the Aesir. The Aesir with Odin and Thor fought hard against the giants and the and the primordial forces that dared to defy the gods rulership and eventually defeated them but many of the lesser Aesir and giants fell and where they lay their weapons and armor and other magical items still lay on the ground Likely the case, father. And Scotty greets her father. After the greetings are done, she says, but we must build shelter. We can save your people and get you get some rest. How many of us are left, uncle? What you see before you, plus a couple dozen or so that we left back in a cave. How far back? A day or so. Did y'all come across the Shaman Village while y'all were in y'all's travels? Shaman Village? The Bear Village. Bear Village? Yeah. <laughs> Earth sign. I, I guess I, that's I, not I, Earth sign. See, I see you have had quite the adventure befitting our family. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, gather we have close. uncle father and, everyone uh, gather close what is it daughter gather uh, gather everyone close i would heal everyone a little uh yeah so everybody you know is within your your 30 feet Shadow is not. Also, Vitor is not. Okay, uh, Scotty carefully gathers everyone within 30 feet, and then she channels positive energy. They look like they're on their last legs, and they need every bit of energy they can get. Oh, you noticed that, did you? And that's nine hit points and 18 vigor to everyone. And she says, we must get shelter, but I can do it one more time today. Here we go. How bad shape is everyone after that? Or does that help a lot? Uh, you would see that although most of the peasants have some of their vitality back, that um, the warriors, you know, are still in pretty uh, bad shape overall. 
you know, just because they're capable of so much more. So like the peasants are like, okay, because they're, they're weaker. So the magic like helped them more, but the Vikings are still a little rough. I distribute says... some of my dragons. Uh, I said, I'm going to start distributing the rest of my dragon uh, rations. I think I had like 40 of them to the warriors and peasants who yeah. are still in need. Food, great. And Father, I'm tired and cannot do more today. This is my last one. But if we rest in a snow year, we can, be, we can press on tomorrow, stronger and healthier and able to make the distance to the giant's graveyard. Here's the last one of the day. Another eight energy. So everyone gets 17 hit points and 34 vitality. How about Shadow and Secret? What are they going to do? Will they rest with us? Yeah, they're like kind of here to um, help you guys get back, you know, uh, safely. You know, you, you were supposed to go and try and find your father. And so, like, they'll try to help you get back safely. But, like, they're also uh, going to take care of themselves first, you know. Sure. We need to build a shelter. Do we have anything around to make a fire with? Um, I'm gonna help uh, Scotty build igloos in the style of our people, and we should get a plus one if we do it together. Yeah, and it should be all of us. We have all these, we have 10 extra laborers who have energy now. Yeah, we're all gonna start building shelter. Um, before we get too involved in the igloos, I'm going to scout around to see if there's a natural sheltered spot. I'm, I'm going to roll perception and see if there's any uh, anything wood to any trees to use as firewood. Yeah, and anything that, that Goodberry might work on, too. Keep your eyes open for that. Please, Absolutely. hey. Any, I, our, our, anything I think me and soften the I think me and Eric can do that together at the same time. Sorry, guys, just adding all the hit points to everybody. While Ulf and Eric go out scouting, Scotty takes faint momentarily from putting, burning so much life energy to heal everyone up. She must rest. Yes, indeed. Having um, given your all to try and heal your people, the glowing residue of your life-saving magic still flowing from your body into theirs as it soothes their freezing bones and warms their very core they can feel their stamina and indeed their very life flowing back into them from you into them and it leaves you momentarily weakened and dizzy your father showing the loving care that you have experienced from this giant man your entire life quickly braces you, not catching you as, you know, he is very proud. He just gently puts a hand on your shoulder, holding you up with the sheer force of a hand that could easily palm a watermelon, you know, and he just holds you there with the with the force and strength that you have known 
but with the gentle touch that only you have really experienced. Even Jalivi, to a certain extent, you you have only ever known this man to be a giant and uh, powerful man. He he has shown this kindness to Scotty's mother and Scotty and no others throughout his entire life as he has been bred and born to leadership and leadership in, in the Angel Grundian tribe requires strength and never showing that you are capable of mercy or weakness in their eyes. You must be able to face down a cave bear or a megaloceros or a woolly rhino with no fear, no hesitation to charge headfirst into death because that is the only way for there to be life. All right. Jillivy also puts her hand on uh, Scotty's and helps her settle to rest for a moment. Thank you for your kindness, cousin. I'm just a little weak need for a bit. I'll be by fine soon. Scotty, you know we are stronger than that. Keep your chin up and never show weakness to the face of anyone else. Yes, father. Secretly, Gingerly thinks to herself, she respects the, uh, she respects the chief more for his kindness, shown in a moment of weakness and empathy. Yeah, and uh, and he, you know, you can see in his eyes the same thing that has, you know, kept you close that like he really does have a care um i guess technically your name would be uh scotty kultanen daughter in case scotty kultanen daughter it is in case you were wondering you know i i just wanted to make sure that that was uh thrown out there you know but yeah so so this is your father these are what's left of your people you all and Eric, you guys go out and scout, and it is a vast open field of just snow with scattered sparse ve vegetation. Um, this this place is huge and just snow covered as far as you can see. It's almost desolate. Yeah, it's a the great stillness. snowy it's... desert. Yes, yes, exactly. The stillness of like a desert. I'll report back to Jillivy and Scotty that I uh, didn't see anything dangers or comfort. And uh, I'll get to work helping anybody making the igloos that's already doing it. Okay. Oh, uh, so so as as they were greeting and you guys were quickly scouting... Uh, as soon as you guys mentioned something about uh, uh, going anywhere or like setting up camp, Kultanen says, no, daughter, we must press on. It doesn't matter now how many of our people die, for we will all be dead if we do not succeed. Yes, father, and our best chance of succeed to succeed is to recover. Is our to follow your chieftain back. as you always have. Do not speak back, daughter, or you'll feel the back of my hand. Scotty backs off and readies her spear, though keeping the uh, point well away, and says, "Father, we are going to rest." Then you are going to stay here and die while we press on. Actually, we'll build igloos and stay with our friends, the squirrels, and we'll be just fine. Uh, cool, cool. Tainan is is uh, a a giant shack sized man here, so you know. I'm going to attempt to persuade Kutain and. Uh, that it, we really should rest. Uh, all of our people are weary. Uh, I think we'll have a better chance of pressing ahead. What's this our people take... nonsense? Uh, 
<clears throat> you're you're a uh, Uslander. For journeying all this way to try to save you and help you with your mission, he should be. They should be no longer Uthlanders, but members of the tribe. Bah! <laughs> and he spits on the ground, but it it's like really dry here, so like it, he has trouble spitting. All right. Uncle, if we rest, we'll have a better chance of succeeding. We can set... And at that, he cuffs perimeter. you upside the back of the head. Have you forgotten your places? I am not just your uncle or father. I am the chieftain of all of Angel Grund. I... And the leader of all of the tribes. And together we have forged a mighty pact that we will save our people and indeed the world from Ragnarok itself. Uh, when I see him cuff Jillaby, I'm going to step in next to Jillaby and interpose or step up to Coltane and uh, and spit on the ground where he spit, and uh, how far are we from where we need to be? He punches you so hard in the face that you can feel a tooth loosen and blood fill your mouth. You take, Scotty calls you take to ten. Her father and says, "Father, don't do that again." And she points her spear at him. You, you take, I'm gonna. You take, you take ten. Spit blood. Out. Uh, stamina damage. He kind of secretly respects that you're still standing and and that you just spit the blood and like continue to stand there. But he raises his other fist to let you know that if you don't take a step back, more pummeling shall ensue. I'm not stepping back, and if I see him strike at me again, it's going to be initiative. And I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go next to Ulf with my quarterstaff drawn. And Scotty calls out to everyone before blows begin to the others, using all of her charisma as the tribal chief. We are not your enemies, and we will not harm anyone. We are not your enemies, is what she says. I am the leader here, and none shall question my authority, or you'll feel more than just my fists. Of course, Didn't question it, I asked how far we are. Yeah, but his daughter and niece were just, like, questioning his authority in front the of Lord. what's left of his tribe. Yeah, that that's fine. I'm I'm just gonna ignore the conversation he had with them and try and get the conversation to be with. Well, as of oh. right now, he intends to strike Ulf unless he steps back. Oh God! Everyone hit the deck. Ulf's doing diplomacy again. Pretty ah. much. <laughs> I'm going to do... Sc Scotty will assist Ulf in his diplomacy check. Yeah, it's me, me too. As will, uh, as will Eric. Okay, so he gets plus two, plus four, and Jalivi, because you critted on your assistance, you actually stop Ulf. Right as he goes to talk, you put a hand on him, disrupting his train of thought just enough for you to be able to gently interpose yourself between your uncle and Ulf, knowing that your uncle will not try to punch Ulf through you. And it forces Ulf to take a half a step back, which is just enough for your uncle to, you know, not 
continue the fight and together uh you're able to to kind of get him to calm down but should anyone say anything or do anything that questions his authority he is going to become quite upset all right scotty says my father is absolutely right Let's organize the igloos and get some rest. And then we can press on and succeed at this. Dad, father was right all along about that. Giving him a chance to save face. Oh no, we're pressing on. We got pretty exhausted just catching up with them here, just riding the squirrels, right? We've been You're, going and going and going. For you guys are not exhausted as far as like your level of stamina goes because you've been riding, but you are sore and experiencing, you know, riding leg to where like it's it's better for you to not keep riding and walking would like exacerbate your your soreness probably however you're in better shape than everybody else in the tribe but your father insists on pushing them on in a in a you know death march kind of manner can i use that do I have to roll another diplomacy check? Maybe I can appeal to his fatherly instinct and say, Scotty needs rest. She's not going to admit how badly, but... I be, would be, because like you, to point out... Go ahead. I'd like to point out out of character that he has been leaving his people behind on dead. Uh, he's not going to slow down. He will march every single one of them to death. Yeah. And... I, I'm going to roll a sense motive as to his actions so far. Yeah. And they have been camping and resting as they went, right? Just not very often. No. That's why they were so far ahead of you. They were only a day ahead of you when you first arrived. But then you guys delayed and they marched on and on and on. All I have is a black screen right now. Anyway, that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try uh, appealing to his fatherly side without questioning his authority. Yeah, and well, you're, you're, because, you're because, because, no, because you already rolled a critical, that was the maximum amount of, of diplomacy that you were able to muster. You you okay. you gave everything you had just to get the um, situation to de-escalate to the point where you know everything was not going to erupt into battle. Now that the fight has been stopped, Scotty drops her spear and falls to the ground in seeming utter exhaustion after restoring all their life energy. As she speaks from the ground weakly and says, With just a night's rest, I can heal, I can do it again, but I must rest, or I shall die. And lays down in the snow, collapsed in exhaustion. Do we have anything nearby that can be used to make a campfire? Not really. You have some of the wood left that you guys have carried with you, you know, but like, there's nothing else around here. Uh, and you only have enough for like one or two more fires that will like not burn for very long, you know, a few hours at most. Also, um, Scotty, as as you collapse in the snow, uh, Cool Tannen comes up to you, picks you up over his shoulder and and goes to continue marching. Uh, from the ground, when he picks her up? Yeah. Oh, gosh. This is a question for the GM. Okay. An attempt to sleep using the witch hex sleep, is that a discernible as an attack? What does it feel like to the person who has it done if they make their sleep? 
Okay, so like, you know, when you say discernible as an attack, like, no, it it's not an attack, but discernible, yes. Does, does the target know the source? Um, kind of. Like, if if you're um as close as you are with 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 him, like carrying you and touching you and everything then like yeah he's pretty much gonna feel it like a uh like a uh a, a, a static shock um would he be able to tell that it's intentional yeah has he ever experienced scotty's sleep hex in the past well, I mean that's a little bit more on you as as a character for you know um, how you want to to play that, but I would say that it is within my um, background of you guys for like what I had kind of thought the relationship would be like. It is perfectly reasonable to think that when your mother died, your father was in an inconsolable rage and was um, not sleeping and it was affecting his decisions. And so you kind of got into the habit of helping your father fall asleep by uh, making him a, a mushroom tea and, um, you know, or and a, singing to him. Yeah. Or a, a soft lulting song. Yeah, or a moss tea or something like that, and and yes, exactly, singing, singing him a soft lullaby that uh, your mother used to sing to you as a baby, and and so he has fond memories of of your mother singing that song, filling the great halls of of his lodge, and uh, so you would sing it to him as he uh, sipped the tea, and then uh, gently you know, help him fall asleep until the point where it became um, indiscernible because it was just part of his routine. Got it. Well, he's carrying Scotty and well, we start trudging. She's going to start singing gently and just doing all those same things in the routine to get his memory thinking about it. And hopefully only after she's warned everyone that that uh, sleepiness is a side effect. In conversation, she warns that, and in song, that sleepiness is a side effect of her magic, her healing magic. Okay, so... She's going to try to put her father to sleep. At, well, hold on. Uh, as, as you go to, you know, start singing and all of that, as the, as the um, tune begins to form in his head and the memories come swirling back he gets a little sad and he shoulders you like how, how to explain this like he bumps his shoulder you know like he's not he's not attacking you he's like nudging you and he says well, who picked up scotty's spear and uh i'm going to reach out to when nobody's looking and touch Scotty with uh, divine guidance as a cantrip to assist her. Okay. And one of the Vikings or or one of your companions would have grabbed your spear, of course. Um, but if if nobody went to grab it before uh, one of the Vikings moved forward, one of the Vikings would have grabbed it being loyal to your father. They would have wanted to make sure that all of your gear and everything was... Jilly got Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, a, as, as you, you start to, you know, sing and, and all of that, he kind of nudges you and is like, Hey, you know, it's not the time for that, but you can tell that it's starting to affect him. Do you continue? I have a question out of character. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. If I use the touch of fatigue I have. To help calm him as well, is that going to be considered? Um, is that going to be considered bad action, or would that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know he's not. Well, first of all, it's necromantic magic, you know, so it feels bad, and and he would definitely know 
that he had had some of his life drained from him you know some of his stamina drained from him from your touch okay and i i just wanted to know yeah yeah no i and i'd like to give you guys that kind of information you know before you do something detrimental like that you know so feel free to ask any of those questions all right so scotty do you continue she's going to stop then but after a little while pick it up again in a low tune and gradually up it just as a comforting does he object the second time a little later after some time had passed so i'm gonna say that after you know uh, a little while waiting you know counting to 300 in your head you you uh begin to hum the tune just a low yes and i'm i'm gonna hum as well joe was thinking of the same thing just humming random what seems like randomly as we walk yeah and, yeah we need to keep up morale and as as you hear scotty's gentle humming you begin to provide a round robin style of of uh accompaniment um but instead of humming you begin to do the uh the harmonizing vocals ah, la, 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 la. and you just <laughs> you know uh harmonize along with her humming to where it forms almost like an acapella type of uh song and this being a popular lullaby amongst your people everybody begins to sing to pick up the the morale as you said to to give themselves you know something it's been days that they've been marching and your father has been rather intent and so he hasn't been focused on like keeping morale up and so they haven't been singing their their you know songs doing their marching you know, music and all of that to, to keep spirits high. And so they all hungrily join in. And now there's an entire uh, group singing, you know, like, Hey Jude, you know, just a, a, a pretty song that, that harmonizes really well. And uh, as you guys do this, your father kind of, tears up a little and you see him kind of go to wipe his eye indiscreetly or discreetly i should say not indiscreetly uh discreetly disguising it as uh him wiping some some snow off of his uh hel his his helmet and and eyelashes um so as he does that he sets scotty down and says, it might be best if we stop and just have a cup of tea and rest for a hour or two. Right, let's build a quick igloo as quick as we can. There's, to get all warm. there's no way you're going to build it in an hour. Not anything big enough Eric, to house even a quarter of you. Eric is going to uh, get started on building a fire. And we can at least get partial shelter. Uh, I could point to you to YouTube videos of four hours to build a complete working e right. for one person. Right, right. But and that's got ten. Yeah, but that's that's four hours of one person, you know, working on it. You you have more people, it's true, but you need to build multiple igloos or a really oh, big no. one, which would be really hard Just to do. Just one that's big enough for all of us to pack in to keep warm. That's right, all. Right, but like that's, snow cave. But that's really that's, big. We could actually probably, if the squirrels agree, use the squirrels as a wind break while we build uh, yes. whatever cook fire we want. And once we should all gather around as close as can for body warmth. Yeah, the we squirrels naturally, once you guys stop, cuddle up with each other. And if you guys all like snuggle in, you know, near their their bellies and, and tails and everything, it'll naturally insulate you and keep you, you know, from the harshest wind as the squirrels 
n instinctively turn their backs to wherever the the wind is coming from uh, and like i said you know they they cuddle into each other because they live up here so they know what it takes to survive and that's nuts yep. and as soon as we all stop i'm gonna use my um spell to have a conversation with the squirrel yeah uh so you guys are building a fire huddling with the squirrels but scotty you you seem pretty insistent so i want to make sure do you want to start building like at least one windbreak wall and see how far you get absolutely we have to do that it, i thought it was so cold with the wind and oh the it is falling. oh yeah yeah no it's no chance of keep no we it's need to build it. yeah we it's it's gonna drain your we can get together yeah it's gonna drain your people's stamina to be out in this cold like yeah yeah i mean even in 15 minutes this many people we should be able to get at least a snow cave we can block off with the two squirrels and oh, a place we don't to even have to build an igloo we can just build a shelter wall just you know partially like would it be possible can... for eric to um attempt to spellcraft campfire wall you're you're trying to uh learn a new spell yes uh actually that's a druid spell so i'm not sure if he is learning a druid. Yeah, it's a second level druid spell. Yep, yep. Um, Just looking it up quick. I posted a link in D20. Okay, so one standard action. You need ash made from burnt thorns. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, it lasts for two hours. Shelters everyone inside so long as the fire continues to burn. 25 feet plus an extra 10 feet, so 35 feet. That should... Oh, that's the range. What's and what it's, two hours it's a twenty up. it's a twenty foot radius sphere, so forty feet. That should be plenty of space to get you guys all in, no problem. And it's uh it's two hours two per hours. level. I see that, yeah, so it does last eight hours. Uh creatures can leave without penalty. If they try to return, they suffer the same consequences as anyone else. Blocks line of sight. All right, yeah. Um so in order to try and cast this spell without having uh, learned it, prepared it, etc. You are going to need to roll a difficulty class 17 spellcraft check. All right. All right. Well, Scotty has time. spellcraft and so do I, but it's not very high. Hers is higher. Yeah, but it's, yeah, a, but... it's a druid spell, so... Is there any way for um, us or even me to assist? Yeah, it's a ranger spell, too. Oh, it yeah. is a ranger. It's also a sorcerer wizard spell, level three. So uh, technically, yeah, you can um, help if you roll a difficulty class 18 spellcraft check. You understand some of the, uh, you know, nuances of the vocal verbal somatic and material 
components to it. So if yeah. I don't roll an eighteen, can will it still help him? No, as but long as it's not a miss. It, it it can only really hurt him if you roll like below a ten. With my rolls, that might, but I'll try it. Yay, Wolf and and Jillaby can help. Go, Wolf. I have so many skills. Yay, I made it. Well, you you made it high enough to not harm him, but you're not helping either. I know. So, so you get a plus That's what two. I mean. Yeah. You get a plus two to... <laughs> I, I, I like that you celebrate not harming. <laughs> Yay, I didn't mess anything up. Uh, uh, so, Eric, you can, go, you can roll with a plus all. two. All right. Uh, Eric is going to attempt to spellcraft. May you save us all, Eric. All right. Wow, so, wow. So you saw the bear shaman do something like this in your time spent with him, and you try to replicate it with Ulf giving you, like, some guidance as far as, like, yeah, if we if we get these thorns burning here, you know, we should be able to channel the the latent nature magic from inside them, you know, to uh, try and and do that. Because as you all know, uh, oh, I forget his name, the world serpent, you know, created all of the of the plant life and some of his magic still lives inside it. And these thorns should be exactly what we need to do this. And you guys try to do it together. And Ulf almost has you concentrating enough to, to be able to do it. But as uh, you're just about to do it, you try to emulate how the bear used its paws. But you have human hands. And so you need to do it a different way and you can't figure out how to do it. And the fire kind of sputters and, and doesn't expand into the wall that you thought it would. You still have a fire going, but no uh, magical campfire wall. Um, would I be able to try it a second time? Not tonight. Which so Scotty calls out to the two uh, to the surviving peasants and everybody get to work. Let's build a wall. We need some shelter. Yep, do yep. what we can. So and, so um, Scotty gets up there and she's like, "We got to build this wall, and the bears are gonna pay for it." So uh, <laughs> uh, 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 she she convinces everybody to get to work but you have to roll for survival so a group check yeah so the the way i'm gonna rule it is that everybody in your village has a working knowledge of building this so you are automatically all helping each other but you're also all having to make your your checks. And so basically, um, based off of how the leaders are going about doing this is going to determine, you know, how quickly everybody is able to work together. And, oh, you got your unseen servant going to work as well. Yes, my unseen servant is going to help um, by you know, distributing snow packs and everything to all the people. So they have less, uh, less steps they have to make. Yeah. Well, uh, because your unseen servant isn't capable of like, you know, delicate, fine movements, especially with a task that it hasn't done before. 
what it can do is pack a whole bunch of snow so that your people are able to grab the snow that has already been packed and made by him and it uh, didn't mean to to genderize your unseen servant uh right. so uh as your unseen servant provides the packed snow your people can grab it and set it into place and carve it into shape and so um it can can keep you guys supplied by just packing the snow because it takes you longer to set it and shape it than it takes it to pack it so it can probably like provide half of you with snow and then like you know a couple of more of you would be needed to provide the other half with enough packed snow because your unseen right. servant doesn't ever get tired whereas you guys you know have to kind of switch in between one of you packing the snow and one of you carrying it over by the people who are setting it and then the other one packs snow while the other one carries it you know like switching yeah that's off. what i was that's that's that was my focus was packing snow so yes that's that i said that and you just expounded on it so thank you oh yeah sorry um you know me i just always try to set as realistic and logical of a scene as possible you know so that you guys are are immersed as fully as possible um and cool tannin is going to be um setting all of the top pieces as you guys get taller and taller since you have a much wider base you're going to have a much taller ceiling So we take about how long to do this? Yeah, so basically with your unseen servant helping and with Scotty and uh, Eric both rolling above a 20 and nobody rolling below a 10, I'm going to rule that if normally you could build a five foot diameter snow cave in four hours with one person then with two four six eight ten twelve fourteen with over a dozen people you can make 15 feet of of diameter um per hour and it's going to require at least a 30 foot diameter so it's going to take you two hours to build the diameter but now in order to get the ceiling done cool tannin is going to have to roll his survival check because he has to lift the ceiling into place by himself while he's doing that i've got to take a five minute break no problem and I'm going to try Touch of Guidance on him as well. Yes, please. Let's get the squirrels to help with that, too. They're much bigger and stronger. Yeah, and although they can help lift the blocks up, he still has to set them and shape them. So it's not going to actually be as big of a help, but with Eric's Guidance, he gets a plus one competence bonus which is exactly enough to get the 15 needed to where he will only take an extra hour rather than an extra two hours so you guys are able to get it done in three hours with everybody working and the unseen servant providing you with not unlimited but you know more bricks of snow than you would have been able to make on your own which freed up two people to be able to to uh set and place instead of having to pack and then of course the squirrels were helping carry stuff as well since as you pointed out they're huge and strong and Coltanen has been considering fighting one of them to the death ever since he laid eyes on them Father, 
these are our friends, and she will introduce them. They saved our lives, and we owe them a life debt. Never in my life have I seen a creature like this grown to this size. To fight and defeat such a beast would be a mark of honor upon my family name. But to kill something that has aided my daughter would be a mark of shame that I cannot bear. And father, there are very big things around here that eat, would eat these squirrels. Let's concentrate on killing them. Ah, to kill a predator would be a much, much more noble uh, and and honorable thing. And uh, kind of off note, like on that note, but off character. Um, it reminds me of a little uh, meme or whatever that I saw. It said, uh, tigers have false eyes on the back of their ears to scare off any predators that would try to attack them and it says i am now slightly less intimidated by tigers but 1000 times more frightened of whatever a tiger considers a fucking predator just kind of reminded me of that that like if these things are this big what are they considering predators yeah, no kidding. Oh, which is also another thing where it points out that the Tarask has a hard shell and spikes on it, and the only things in nature that have that kind of stuff are to protect them from things that are trying to swallow them whole. <laughs> so it's like, what is trying to swallow the Tarask? So what do you guys, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they uh, say that, you know, they have been ordered by their queen to see you guys safely to your destination. And although they dare not step foot in the giant's graveyard, they will take you to its footsteps. I'll ask if they'll uh, help a scout with uh, one of the Vikings to help guide us ahead of the main party on the march. Only Kultanin knows the way. It's all right. He can give tell us where to scout. Scotty speaks up and says, Ulf? Eric, ordinarily you're outstanding, but I think in this case we should stay together. Oh yeah, I'm staying inside this sheltered spot while I keep guard. No, let's let's split the party. No, let's always split the party. Yeah, let's split the party just before we get to the dangerous spot, to the most dangerous spot. I agree. You people are insane. All right, I'm back. Although, yes, not in this case, but in some cases, splitting parties will actually give you a little advantage, but not always. But in this mm -hmm. case, no, we're not gonna. Oh. You guys are no fun. I agree. Advanced scouting is important. Yes, All plus right. it is easier to kill you when you are lesser in numbers. Which means we have to fight. Whatever. Uh, I'm going to try and get convince the squirrels to cuddle up with everybody and et cetera. Yep, they can burrow a little hole. Oh, you don't, you don't have to convince them. These, these squirrels already are cuddling with each other. And like when you're in the frozen north, it's the more the merrier. Like, get on in here, you crazy kids. Who wants to cuddle up with my nuts? Oh, yes. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't forget that Shadow, you know, is still very much telling all of his very bad puns, you know, which revolve around these nuts mostly. 
All right. Um, are we going to get a full night's rest here? Um, well, I mean, I don't want to reveal the future too much. So, like, you're, right. you're, right. you're, well, you're certainly settling for down him. for a full night's rest. We're sure going to try. Right, right. You're going to try. <laughs> All okay. right, so we're all settled and nestled, and the squirrels have burrowed their little holes, and we're all next and, to each other, cuddled against squirrels and people. So, and am next. I right? We found nothing that could possibly work for good berries. Is that right? Correct. Uh, although, who is cuddling with Shadow? I'll deal with Shadow and his nuts. Shadow says, "Hey, hey, hey! Watch my nuts." And you know you're you're you know cuddled up closer to his head because you're not dumb. You've gotten to know Shadow over the course of your journeys together, and uh, you look down and you see that he's placed some of his his spare uh, trail mix that he keeps in a little pouch around his neck uh, down by you, and, and um, he that's his. I'm shadow and I'm funny kind of way of uh, offering you guys some, some sustenance to, to keep you guys going because he noticed that the rest of your village seems to have run out of water and, uh, and uh, food. Well, they shouldn't have run out of food. We, I gave them the rest of my dragon meat. T-Rex meat, but yeah, they they uh, were out of food before that. So, like whatever whatever you had and cooked up while while you guys are uh, uh, resting, while they scouted, um, you know, they ate all that, but now they still don't have any food while you guys are resting now. Okay. And uh, we ha do we not have water? You guys uh, have some water but like just enough for you guys for the next like three days so if you give it to everybody you're going to be out tonight well we're all surrounded by ice and snow we just have to have the proper w water warming system going that presumably is a thing while we rest. and uh i can cast create water as a cantrip as well correct and i think i'm going to do that okay. yeah let's load up on that before we we need to be strong to with all our essentials taken care of. So you're going to need to cast it. Let's see. You can make eight gallons of water. You guys need about a gallon every two days to keep you alive. So we'll say that you have a uh, half gallon of... Uh, um, water skins so you can fill 16 water skins per casting there are 14 of you so each of you has one and two of you have two so if you cast it again everybody would have two water skins which is enough to keep them alive for two days and four people would have two yeah, or, 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 or uh I'm sorry, everybody would have two, but four people would have three. Or we could let the squirrels have one of the extras. The squirrels know how to uh, get their water from the nuts and uh, snow and everything. Like, they, they don't okay. need your help cool. surviving. They're squirrels. Okay. I provide enough water for everybody to have two water skins. Okay, and which four get three? Um, Vitor may. Uh, does Vitor need water? Oh yeah, Vitor does need water. I'm sorry. So you have fifteen. So yeah, Vitor needs all three of the extra ones, or two of the, two of the four extras go to Vitor. So now you have two extra water skins. Okay, um, does anyone want them? You should give them to the people with the, out of the party with less vitality, probably one of the peasants, probably the peasants or... 
I'll offer it to the squirrels first, and if they refuse, the squirrels it, don't need it. They said, and if they refuse it, I'll uh, give it to uh, the people that uh, the two people that I think look the most weak or what have. Yeah. So there's uh, one peasant that is still like almost dead, like almost half health, and another one that is just a little bit healthier than that but still pretty close the rest of them are fairly close to full you know like they're they're okay for now but like they're they're in the harshest biome in the entire world like this this is not a place you go to like live this is a place you go to die Let's make sure to keep the hurt people, the ones in the worst shape, in the middle, in the warm, and those of us in best shape on the outside. Oh, I got mm. a nice warm spot right here by my nuts for them. Oh, at least Shadow's not trying to teabag someone. At least he's consistent. I'll distribute some of his nuts. Like Shadow, I hope you enjoy watching him eat them. And now we sleep. Yeah, so uh, because they're kind of hyperactive, the squirrels need to like cuddle up and go to sleep right now, but they can wake up and take the, the uh, second or third watch. Or the second and the third watch. All right. I lost oh. my connection for a second. I'll take the second watch. And uh, I'm going, I'm going to get Ulf to assist me with crafting some arrowheads out of the stones that I found earlier. I'll do that while other people are doing their watch, and then, as usual, I'll pick up whatever watches and make small talk with any of the Vikings if they pick a watch. Now, don't forget, you guys are still going to need about six hours of sleep, so you only have like two hours to you know, do this. Right. And if you're taking a watch, then like you need to decide if you're staying up and doing this on your watch or like how this works here. I was just going to use the keep watch spell. Oh, you're using the keep watch spell. Oh. So, yeah. so, so, uh, cool. Tannen says, Oh, Scotty, your your companions seem to uh, be more useful than their size led me to believe. Indeed, Father, that's why I couldn't have you punching them out. Uh, I still might punch this one, but not right now. Okay, and one of these days I'll introduce you to my betrothed, too. You might want to punch him, too. Oh! I thought I had yeah. made a good match for you. What what seems to be the oh, you trouble? Did, but you like to punch people, Dad. I I am I am into punching. It's true, it's true. And he punches you right in the shoulder. Yep. Ulf, Eric, everyone. I suggest we get some sleep. And she names out the Viking warriors, the tough guys who are better off than the others, and says, "You guys, we need you to keep watch so we can sleep." Will they agree to take the watches? Well, your your uh, Scotty Coltan and daughter, they dare not go against you. Exactly, and that lets Jillivy and Ulf and Idik get some sleep right away. Scotty, same thing. Scotty's doing. We need... Scotty is reminded that she's back amongst the people who nearly worship her, and and you can decide how she feels about, you know, finally having people follow her her commands again. And of course, she's just acting as uh, her father's uh, uh, second, making it seem as if everything she says is coming direct from him. And he, he would be of that opinion, too, is the objective. As she has since she was about 
four or five years old. Exactly. So can we get a full night's rest? Because we're beat. Yes. And uh, Eric is going to make as many arrowheads as he can and still get a full night's rest. Roll for craft. How many stones do I break? Several. Have any of these others any arrows to lend him? Yes. Um, however, as you break several of the stones, you become frustrated, and uh, Kultanen sees what's going on and grunts towards one of his men, and they bring you a, a bag of arrow shafts and heads that just need to be assembled. Are the heads? What are useful? the heads made of? What they are. are the heads? They are made of bones that have been sharpened. All right. Um, can any of the men here help me assist me with uh, crafting some stone arrowheads? No, they're not. They're not into doing work for other people. Iglos, Joseph, my friend here. My friends here need to rest. Please make arrows for him. And she describes the exact. You know this. Just like, let him rest. You guys make the arrows. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have a very strong sense of independence in this tribe. To where like. You, you know, you got to make your own arrows and, and everything like they're only willing to give you the arrows that they had to assemble because <coughs> Kultanen said so. But now that Scotty Kultanen daughter is telling them what to do, they're like, oh, I and guess I guess we should get on that. And does the fact that I provided water for everybody in the tribe come into play here? Uh. Only to the extent that, like, they feel a little closer to you because in their tribe, like, okay, so they don't do work for other people, but everybody shares all of the food. They feast in the Great Hall together as a tribe every night. I don't well, really. I hope we can on the fire. Let's. Uh, I'm sure we can cook up a little bit of uh, shoe leather soup. And am I successful in attempting to craft any arrowheads? Eric, you're trying to help Ulf craft some arrowheads, but every time you you break one down to where he can you know, start the sharpening process, uh, he breaks it. Could Jalubi's unseen servant craft arrowheads? It could do the basic work of getting them shaped like an arrow, but getting them sharpened requires a fine uh, touch. You have to have craft arrows to do so. All right. Well, I will cast it again. So while before I go to bed, so that he it can help get it started. We'll just break all of them that you craft. A roll to one. We're just not having tr We're just not having any luck with those arrows. My right, right. Yeah. We're just gonna assemble arrows and leave it that they warriors to do. Please, you need your rest. Who knows how long we'll have before we must move on. Rest and vigor for. Right. Yeah, you guys go to sleep. Get your rest. Don't make Scotty cast a spell on you. She's been doing it to her father for years. She'll do it to you without hesitation. No comment.
So we get I, a good long rest. I like the I like the image of Scotty kind of taking on the role of her mother as she gets older and older. And <clears throat> your mother was like a mother figure to the entire tribe. And so you're just becoming more and more like her. Like, it is time for everyone to go to bed. Precisely. And I, I'm, can I memorize stone bursts for the next day? Yes. I think I'm going to switch out reduced animal for stone burst. Okay. And remember to leave an open spell slot. And brush your teeth. Oh, of course. Now get to bed. Eric, did you keep track of how many stone arrows we had from the previous session? Um, no, I did not. I didn't realize that we had had, had an opportunity to make arrowheads. We might not have. All right. Uh, I I seem to recall that you guys had made um progress on uh finding the stones but i don't remember actually crafting the arrowheads uh give me just uh a couple minutes here guys i gotta take a quick bio break works for me okay so the unseen servant should be able to at least get the arrows into the right shape to be sharpened. Yeah, we're just not going to get any crafted tonight, Brian. Doesn't matter what we do unless someone else has that skill to you. Right. I thought I took a, a point in it, but apparently I did. We'll see if any. We'll see in the morning if any of the Vikings did. Maybe some of them knew a bit about how, about fletching. Let's not reduce our chance of sleeping. To bed Actually, very matronly. What? If, if any of the Vikings do a watch with me, I'll ask them to show the finer points to me. So I'll bring that up when I DM it. Wolf, they're keeping watch so you can sleep. I don't you do that, Scotty. To recover. I recover you them anyway. Sleep. <laughs> My character plans to never sleep again. Why? What What trauma happened, Wolf? He learned the keep watch spell. That, that must be pretty traumatic. Got it. I mean, if I have to use a both my spells in a day. I won't. I'll take a nap, but you know. How many skills are we supposed to get at level up anyway? It's class dependent, huh? Yeah, it, yeah. it all depends on your class and your intelligence. Yep. And just for the record, um, you still need sleep to avoid like going crazy, but like, yeah. That's why I said you should sleep tonight. We got the Vikings. Yes. Even with the spell going. Scientists still don't still don't know why we need to sleep, but like our brains literally like start to malfunction if we don't. But, but magic. Um if that's the DM's rule and I'll go to sleep. Well so it, it's... wiggles over and makes some room and says, Oh, over here or you know it's it's not so much um that that the magic doesn't work as far as like replenishing your uh hit points etc um it's just that sustained not sleeping at all will lead to insanity that's just like we don't know why that happens it just happens yeah that, that's fine with me I mean, this is a good, safe place for me to not use a spell. So, yeah, I'll get some sleep then. Yeah. yeah so, your like, depravity does not be extended any more than it already is. Yeah. So, like, just you know, for the record, so that you know how I'm how I'm ruling this. Um, the magic works like 
any drug or anything that would keep you um, alert and active. But eventually, no matter how much cocaine or whatever you do to keep yourself awake, your brain just starts to like malfunction, you know, and so the magic will keep you going. But sooner or later, you need to sleep. Or if you if you don't, or you or he just make you crash in the middle of walking somewhere because you're like haven't slept in a week. You well, might well might more more likely, I'd have him experience like hallucinations and uh, paranoia and stuff like that. Well, at least you would have the wisdom to spot that something's not right. Now, would I be able to get away with less sleep using that spell? Oh yeah, yeah, way less sleep. Anyway, I'm getting full night's sleep. Okay. As in six hours. Yeah, that's all I rule you need. I, I rule that you get two hours of doing whatever you want and six hours of sleep, and then you're fine. Everything's fine, uh, unless you're in like adverse weather conditions like you guys are, but you're fine inside the igloo. Um, so, like... If you get less than six hours of sleep, it's possible that you could, like, be tired or um, exhausted, you know, like you could suffer certain penalties like that. Or you might not recover all of your stamina. You know, it, it just re it depends on what exactly kept you from getting sleep, etc. All right, so the next morning you guys wake up. It's time to set out. Everybody else is already awake. No, and in, in fact, Ulf probably wakes up first, being used to starting a pot of coffee before the rest of the uh, party wakes up so that he can get his fix in. Uh, what's our wood supply? I probably won't do that this go around. You have one more night of eight hours of fire. Yeah, I'm not going to use any of the wood for it. Once everyone's good and up, Scotty would like to do a, a med medical healing check on everyone to check them all out and look for anything that needs tending and tend to their injuries and whatever. For example, there's a woman with iron deficiency, and she gets gives her some rusted nails to to suck on that sort of, thing. and then gives her a tetanus shot. So are we full again? I think that's the point of getting a full rest. Yes, I think we're all up to full on everything. Just double checking. Some of the, it looks like some of them are still hurt, though. How, in that, uh, Mr. GM, in that assessment of everyone, how are they doing? Scotty wants to know the limits of her tribe's endurance, so. Yeah, go ahead and to... go ahead and roll that check, and then I'll give you your. I'll help. I, wait, I don't have that skill. Never mind. Eh, eh. She's brusque about it. Distracted. Well, there's a lot of people, and you try to check them all out thoroughly. But you're also in a hurry, and so what you're able to determine is that although they are all relatively okay thanks to your healing magic, they are all also suffering from the long-term effects of being in the freezing cold of only being able to see by torchlight of starving, you know, they're malnourished, they're uh, slightly dehydrated, they are bone weary. They've been traveling and following your father because they have no other choice. And, and some of them are just not prepared for this 
kind of journey. The Viking warriors are doing okay, but the regular townsfolk who would have been slaughtered if they had been left behind, you know, they're just not prepared for this kind of adventure. And so they are, you know, fast fading. Speaking of townsfolk, let, just out of character, let me remind you that there's still one of her townsfolk at the bear village. Yes, um, Nori. Right? Nori? I think that was yeah, her name. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think that was her name. Er Erna. Erna. It was Erna. Erna. Yeah, so... Perhaps after we, after we complete our objective and end, head off Ragnarok, we can try to make it back to the Ursine village with these people. Yep. That well, would be our only chance. Their so, only chance. so just just so that I'm clear about this, your father believing that Ragnarok is coming and that he can prevent it by like getting one of these you know items and everything makes him a little bit crazy. Uh, all of you believe in the gods and you know the story of Ragnarok, but, you know, it's a lot like uh, modern day religion to where some of the of the various religions might believe that doomsday is coming. But most people like just assume that it's either not coming or like that they won't be alive when it does come. Sure, let's. Father, tell me all of the, tell me everything. Tell me what you know. Tell me which weapons you're seeking. How do you wish to head off Ragnarok? Tell the, the whole story. Let's hear everything. Yep, yep. We are intently listening to to your instructions. Okay, so Kultanen sits everybody down as you prepare to go to sleep, and he's... no, no, in the morning after in, we're in the morning. Oh, okay. I figured. Yeah, we in could, the morning. I figured we could no, no, uh, retcon that. Before we sleep. In the okay. Morning. Okay. Either way, either way, whatever works. No, in the morning is fine. Uh so he sits everybody down after everybody wakes up and he says I shall tell you of what I know of what I have seen of what I have been told and of what I believe to be true I dreamt a dream and in this dream a single snowflake fell from the heavens and when it landed upon the tallest mountain it grew and expanded until it covered the entire world and as it spread and covered my people I saw them buried as if below an avalanche their screams still fresh in their mouths as the snow piled in around them. I saw my warriors, my greatest champions, crushed like ants. I saw women and children, mothers holding their babies, encompassed by the snow, dead where they stand. I watched as people starved and froze to death in the streets, desolate, deprived of life. I watched then as the great world serpent rose from the depths of the frozen oceans. I saw lightning strike it as Thor descended from the heavens. I saw myself standing with the Aesir trying to prevent Surtur 
and the fire giants from crossing the rainbow bridge into Valhalla. And I saw your monger, your mongunder, the great frost giant, as tall as a mountain, rise up out of the frozen ice and shatter the world in two with his mighty axe. I went to all of the seers, and they told me that I had been blessed with visions because of the blood that runs in our family's veins of the return of Jormungur, Jormungunder, the, our great ancestor, the first of the frost giants. And although we have but giant's blood in us, he is our ancestor nonetheless. And as I watched his return, I saw the world end. I saw Surtur plunge his fiery blade into the Rainbow Bridge, shattering Valhalla's connection with Midgard forever. I know that I witnessed a future, but when speaking with the many learned wise men and seers, all of them told me I had seen Ragnarok, but one of them told me that I had seen but one possible version of Ragnarok and what may come, and that the future is not predetermined by the gods, but the gods themselves are at the mercy of fate, and that fate spins its web for all of us, and we are but caught in it, waiting until the day when she comes and cocoons us and sucks our blood as all of us must one day face our final uh, battle and, and ascend to the to the Aesir if we are worthy. This is all we can do. But while we are here, before the great web of fate takes us, we have the option to change what is fated for others. We can change the future. We can determine exactly what was going to happen. Yes, a and until that day, I intend to fight and try to prevent Ragnarok. My giant ancestors, Scotty, as you know, have passed down all of the tales and stories from the golden age before the age of man, before the gods and primordials destroyed the world in their battle for dominance over it, when all was, was better, the giants ruled alongside the Aesir, and together they built mighty kingdoms and forged weapons of such power that no one has seen their like since. These primeval giants were bigger than even our own giants that we know of here today. They were the size of entire mountains. They were the size of buildings. And each of them carried with them a weapon built by the mighty dwarves and giants together forging weapons that cannot be described. And when they fought the gods and the battles ended, their bodies laid strewn on the mountains covered by thousands of years of ice and snow. They lay still and we shall go and we shall gather these weapons, these armaments, these artifacts for ourselves and we shall wield them against Surtur, against Jormungandr, against any who would stand against the Aesir and the gods and as their emissaries 
as their chosen champions, we shall save the gods from their own destruction, and they shall raise us up as gods amongst men, and we shall fulfill our family's calling to take the place of the giants after we fell their kingdoms and claim their castles for ourselves. And also the world will become a paradise because the ice giants will no longer be freezing it over and all of this land will return to the lush and fertile land that it once was. And uh, I'm going to be king of everything, so that's pretty cool. So, yeah. Okay. <sighs> Thank Alrighty. you for the tale, Father. We too have our own tales of the witch and and uh, and her work on on the village. We came across a a witch in the village when we were finding you. So. What what did she look like? She took the form of the mother. Uh, the mother priestess, and but she was a, uh, she was some sort of hag. I knew it. I knew the day that we left, she had placed a curse upon us. I have felt it lingering ever since. Well, breaking this curse will, I think breaking the curse will help us defeat the giants. Aye, or yay, yay, but how are we to do it? Sorry he slips into Scottish sometimes, I'm doing my best. Am I, uh, am I supposed language. to know that answer? <laughs> uh, well, no, not really. Like, he, he's, he's at a loss for it too if he knew how to break the curse he would have he's tried everything he can to ward off the evil spirits um but it's it's not happening um i think if we work together between if we combine all our powers with my star seeing and 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 all and such we if we work together we can break the curse and use all the tools that we have Maybe if we sacrificed one of these great beasts, it would please the gods and they would see fit to lift my curse. No, no, no. They are, no, they have been our friend. We must not sacrifice them. Also, they are beloved of the gods and the gods would strike us down if we did that. But we should keep our eyes open for a good sacrifice. What of this bear here? Uh, this this bear is also favored by the gods. My father, I think if we press forward once we're rested, we will find things to sacrifice. Who amongst sure you is willing to sacrifice yourselves to appease the gods and lift this curse? We have a minotaur head, will that do? Ooh, ooh, I have a minotaur phallus. How can you sacrifice a phallus? <laughs> and he steps forward and he says, Well, who amongst you shall do what is necessary to save our people? We all, I step forward, I shall, but I'm not sacrificing myself. We, we, have a, we have the minotaur head and we have the minotaur phallus. That should suffice. <laughs> I think, I think it would be much better to sacrifice the blood of our enemies to this end. Uh, yes, I, the blood of our enemies will be the... S Scotty's eyes roll back in her head, and she says, yes, that is it. To remove the curse, we, we need the blood of our enemies. Friends will not help. Yeah, but we can't take that chance. And one of the Vikings... Uh, uh, I Iglos, what is that? What you called him? Ilgos? What I, I forget what you called him. Steps forward, and he says, "I shall have the honor of sacrificing myself for the good of our people." And 
with that, Coltanen says, Then let the honor be yours. Step forward and kneel. And he does. And Coltanen raises his great axe into the air. We envy you, man. You'll beat us to Valhalla. And he screams, Valhalla! As Kultan, as Kultanen's axe comes down, lopping the man's head off in one blow that didn't even seem like he wasn't even going as hard as he could. He just idly lops this man's head off. And uh, he, he Ilgos uh, says... You know, Valhalla, as his head is chopped off and as it rolls to the ground, you see a smile form on his face and and he is dead. And he made he's the lucky Noble one sacrifice. We will and make then a special place for you. Cool Tannen goes and picks up his head and he holds it high letting the blood drip down in a pattern on his face. And he says, Mighty Thor, all Father Odin, I offer this sacrifice to you that you would see fit to lift this curse upon my people. Let us suffer in this land no longer than we have to. Let our people survive and claim the weapons of our enemies so that we might fight them and join you in the great battle to save the world. And then he passes the head to Scotty. Who does all the traditional rites with it. And then you would pass it to Jalivi and then, you know, everybody passes the head around getting some of the blood on their face and then finally after everybody in the tribe does it they hand it first to uh eric and eric does the same and then you would hand it to ulf yeah, does yeah. the same yep all right so now you guys all have this warrior's blood on your face and it is supposed to uh, lift the curse. As uh, Ulf, as you finish, what do you do with the head? I'm going to pass it to Vitor. And Vitor tries his best to copy you guys, but kind of ends up like putting his face in the head, you know, like a little bit. <laughs> so he gets the blood on his face, which accomplishes it. But, uh, you know... It, it's it's it, me messier and and not as smooth looking. However, the squirrels instinctively reach out for the head when Vitor goes to drop it, and do the same. And now everyone in the party has this warrior's blood on their faces, and you guys all have a different mark that the blood has uh, dripped and pooled to make. However. As the the uh, blood dries, some of you notice that the mark has dried in the shape of one of your runes. Some of you have the rune of death on you. Some of you have the rune of power on you. Some of you have the rune of light on you. And some of you have the rune of knowledge on you. Players, you guys can have a rune or not. And you can choose which rune you have. The rest will be assigned randomly in between sessions. Please name the runes again. They are death. Power, light, and knowledge. Can there be a rune for life, too? Nope. 
I mean, there can be, and there is, but it, it didn't form on any of you. Uh, you know what? Roll 1d100. Let's see how lucky you're feeling. Okay, so the Rune of Light is like a combination rune that is light, life, like it just, it stands for growth and encompasses a lot of the aspects of that. We don't need to all roll, huh? No, that was just because Scotty had an interesting idea that, uh, you know, I wanted to not just say no to, you know, outright like that. Um, so if if she rolled above a 50, I was going to let it be a combo rune. If she rolled above a 90, I was going to let there be an actual life rune that she would have. So, yeah, once again, death, power light and knowledge and again not everybody has a rune i'm going to i'm going to roll to see who gets what what rune but you guys can all have a rune if if you want you get to choose it but you have to choose it right now um what do the different runes do could Jalevi could you live with her knowledge arcana be able to, to decipher that? Mm, that's not the way the game works, my friend. You choose door number one or door number three. I've already shown you that there's nothing behind door number two. All right. Um. I love the I love the nuts on you, Wolf. You're like, the DM said there's a death rune? Give me that. Sign me up for that one. I was just about to do that because I have, you know, a little touch of necromancy. Yeah, you can't pick the same one. You got to pick different. I know, but you, I was just about to say death and you didn't, you, you are evil. You can probably pick the same one. <laughs> You're not locked in on that. Hmm. I'm figuring one of us, it'll probably, you know. I actually would prefer that each of you picked a different one, but, like, you know, I'm not going to necessarily force that on you. I'll take power. Eric will take knowledge. All right. So, what effects any of these runes have, none of you knows. However, if one of you were to uh, cast Detect Magic, I will do just that. Then I you, can do it. Then you will see that all of the runes do, in fact, put off a slight aura of magic. However, it's unlike any aura you've ever seen. You are familiar with the Viking runes, but you have never known them to confer actual magical powers before. Each of these runes is ex is exhibiting magical powers, but its aura is strange to you, and you cannot identify it. Can I cast read magic and see if I can? Yeah. And I, I have a black screen right now on the on D twenty. Um, is there a way you can load that? Eric? Yeah, I'm stuck on a black screen. I can't select my character. I got a 20 on read magic. If you want to roll for me, then I, I would totally be for it, though. Have you tried reloading the the screen? Because you have all your vision on. Uh, let me try it. Hang on. Is he maybe just in the dark place on the map? No, I've pulled oh, everybody yeah, here. I got it. I oh. got it. I got it. Okay. Roll Spellcraft to see if that helps you decipher anything. I rolled a 20. I think I should know. Okay, uh, so as you cast Read Magic, 
this will uh, allow you to read magical text. However, because this is rune magic, you aren't able to just read it. It's one single rune instead of a, a series of words. And so it's not like it has a, a message for you. And all you can read is the meaning behind the symbol. So now you know that Ulf's rune means death. You know that Eric's rune means knowledge. You know that Scotty's rune means light or growth or life. It's, it's kind of a combination rune. And uh, you can't see your rune. All right. Okay, uh, I'll do detect magic and uh, see what her rune is. Her rune is magic. Slight magic that you can't understand or read the aura of. Well, I already know what it means because, you know, you already told us. Yes, but, but you know, Jalivi does not. Right. Can I uh, interpret the runes that I see on people? Or what do I need to ro roll for? Yeah, no, you'd need to cast read magic like she did. Okie dokie. Jalivi, do you tell them what their runes mean? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so after I, I cast Read Magic, I tell all, uh, you have the death rune. I cannot interpret any more than that, but it is it is the symbol of death. Uh, Scotty has the symbol of light and growth, and Eric has the symbol of knowledge inscribed on our backs as a result of our recent ritual sharing on your faces on your faces okay so we have all been enshrined with some imbuement of power with these runes Uh, she does not. I'll attempt to draw it then. Have you ever, like, done one of those things where you try to draw something that you can see right in front of you, but it just doesn't look the same? I fail miserably. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I make the attempt. Yeah, so you draw something, but, you know, it's like, uh, Pictionary to where you know she just can't quite figure out what you're drawing. Well, perhaps Scotty. I'm drawing a 4D object in 2D. Perhaps Scotty could draw the room. I mean, th these are her people, aren't they? Not. Yeah, but sure. uh, you. It was described perfectly just there. It's like trying to draw a 4D object in 2D. You you just can't get the the image to look right because this is a magical rune and you don't have the ability to write in rune speak all right all right now we must carry on with with your runes on your on your faces we must carry on to the giant and would there place. be any opportunity to attempt to fletch arrows again before we head out oh yeah so um you you could get that whole bundle of arrows fletched in one night if you if you just like diligently worked at it your fingers might be a little sore and blistered in the morning but you'll you'll live not get not the arrows done when we stop again Oh, and Jalivi still had her uh, unseen servant, so you know he can fletch an arrow. You know he can he can right. get everything assembled as far as that goes. 
Um, and yes, one of the uh, Vikings does indeed have craft arrows. That's how they've been managing to continue to make arrows. So um, they would have been able to uh, sharpen some of the stone heads for you if Scotty, Coltan, and Daughter uh, ordered so. All right, so we're going to assume that Unseen Servant was fletching arrows and shaping them just as, just as you know, vaguely as he could so that we don't have to waste time on it. How many arrows are we able to make? Seven. All right. Do you want to split them up, Barry? Hang on just a sec. Okay. Um, so there's seven of them? Yes. Okay, who all has a bow uh, among our group that can shoot the arrows? All of the Vikings, you, and I think that's it. Doesn't Ulf have a bow? Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. It does. yeah. Okay, I'll give four to myself and three to Ulf. I think you should give one to each Viking. Ah, yes. Do we have, uh, well, there's not enough arrows to go around, though, are there? Actually, no. You have to touch the arrow to imbue it with a spell, right? So we'd have to distribute it at that point in time. Right. So in that case, I'm going to hold on to them until until uh, the time comes. And I, I think I should take one just in case it goes smoother that way. Right. Okay, so, so I'll give give one to Ulf right now, and I'll hold on to the other six. Yep. All right. So, as you guys um, are preparing, you set off eventually. Is there anything else that you guys need to do before you set off? I think that's it. Uh, make sure you got your spells right. I've got to speak with the animals and keep watch. And I switched out reduce animal for stone burst. In the morning, let us pray to the gods and look for a sign about what we may face today. Do we see any signs? Jillaby no. looks to the skies to see this, to see any signs about where we must go first. As Jillaby stares at the stars, suddenly the constellations begin to swirl and move, and you can see through the snow, a twinkling star that seems to be shining down on one particular spot. As she looks at the stars and sees this beacon of light, she says to the party, I I see a promise, a, a light of promise. This is the way we must go. And points the way. And I'm going to roll perception just for the hell of it. Okay. Jilly V, where would we be without you to see our way? You look up, and all you see is a constant falling of snow. You can discern no stars, and as far as you can tell, it is cloud-covered.
All right. Well, uh, are we going to that place then? Yes, we are headed. We will head that towards the towards the stars that I have seen, because that that is where our quest will continue. And she points, which points us whichever way we're seeing the star, so that they'll know. And I'm going to cast. Uh, do we have uh, sufficient light in the area? You guys have a couple torches yet? You must trust, Eric. Eric, you must trust me. Okay. All right, I will. What's up? Oh, nothing. I just told him you must trust me. I think we're ready to, whatever we're going to do, stop or move on. Yes, we are rested and ready to go. We can succeed at this. Find the giant's graveyard and redirect the fate of Ragnar. I know we can succeed, my friends. Ah, daughter, it is good to have you. These doubters were beginning to think we would all freeze to death up here. But now, with you at our side, I know we shall succeed. I was not shown these visions so that the world could perish anyway. Oh, by the way, should we stop carrying uh, Il Ilgos around here? Or should we, like, bury him or something? Bury him, otherwise it's eat him. Well, uh, does Vitor have any interest in eating him? You're not eating Ilgos. Ilgos was married to my my wife's sister. Yes, right. it's better that we all starve to death. I see that a perfectly so I see a I see a perfectly good bear and two perfectly good squirrels. And we shall press on, and we will find foes to slay. I bet that bird cooks up real sweet. Star here gives me my magic that healed you all. The gods give us our magic, you know this, daughter. Yes, but they channel it through star. And Vitor is none too tasty, I'm sure. But we, but if we press on, I'm sure we will find foe. And the squirrels have ever replenishing nuts. Yeah, the squirrels have trail mix. They, I got they, I got hard. tons of nuts. <laughs> we know. I got I got ten pound nuts. Good for roasting. Oh, you know ha -ha, it. Kidding. Ah, I like this one. You can still understand all this, Wolf. Oh yeah, I made that joke in Squirrel to them too. Just because a shadow would love it. Yeah. All right, so you guys press on, and you come to a sparse forest. There are some cliffs and caves nearby and you can see that the next leg of your journey from here is going to be straight up a mountain i think it would be good to replenish our wood supply very much oh you gather good berries too if we can find any you want some wood you guys want some wood with some nuts on it not that kind of wood. I'm scared to answer you, Shadow. Go ahead, hit me with your joke. I got I got plenty of nutty wood right here. Looks more like a basket case to me. How does it compare to the Minotaur? Um 
not quite, you know, but like this is a much bigger creature. So like, you know, like not at all, relatively speaking, but like close totality speaking. Are you suggesting that I use your wood to build a fire? It'll warm you up. Well, I'm sure it's not going to feel too good for your wood, though. I think you'd be getting the worst end of that stick, my friend. And then he just laughs and runs up a tree and he shakes it as hard as he can, trying to shake down all of the loose dead branches that are going to burn the best, as well as any uh, nuts that might be left on it. All right. Eric will gather a uh, good 20 pounds of, of wood. Oh, did I say I run up a tree? These trees are so small, he runs up to a tree. Runs right. it over? Yeah, he just, like, <laughs> snaps a tree, like, in half. And of these many trees, do any of them have pine nuts suitable for good berry? Nope. These are not the pine nut trees. These are the crap nut trees. Scotty will point everyone, tell everyone what it is she's looking for and say, keep your eyes open for these. They can. F they only smell like crap. They don't taste too bad, but they smell real bad. Question is whether they'd work for good berries. It sounds like they wouldn't. Nope. They they are mostly for making uh, uh, crap nut soup, and and you can use it to make crap nut butter to spread on like bread. But yeah, right. but no well, good if berry crap nuts. If it's useful, we can gather a few, gather gather a little bit of wood and a little bit of uh, ingredients, I guess. Crap nuts. Yes. Yep, we'll gather. Yeah. This is what the squirrels are telling you are they are. They they have no way of like explaining, you know, what like a thing is in like a different language because they don't know different languages. So these are just their crap nuts. Well, because they smell like crap. <laughs> uh huh. Well, I'm a. I'm just. We're just gonna assume that they're not going down for us to gather or they're. Yeah. Know, but anyway. Yeah, and these are these are smaller nuts, so the squirrels, uh, the gigantian squirrels, tend not to gather them and eat them because it's harder to carry a bunch of small things. You know, like carrying a handful of sand is harder than carrying one big rock. So, uh, anyway, shut up, Odie. So anyway, um, sorry about that. Uh, they don't tend to gather these nuts to begin with just because it's harder. But then also when you crack them open, as soon as you guys crack one of them open, you get the very distinct smell of somebody's fart. Just like that special Limburger cheese. Mm -hmm. Or hard boiled eggs, right. you know. Stuff that smells so good, but smells so bad, but tastes so good. All right, well, I guess we're going to gather some crap nuts then. And wood. And wood. Jalivi really wants some wood. So, <laughs> um, you guys gather... Oh, we don't have... We're, we're short We're short on firewood, so... You are. I figure if he... I figure if, uh, if he's already broken the trees, and I, I was like, oh, look, easy pickings, and pick it up. Yeah, Shadow, like, breaks all the branches off, strips it down real good, real easily, and you guys are able to gather up three faggots. And so one of you can carry one or two, but not all three. Three what? Bundled three sticks. Of wood. Oh, okay. Yes. So well, as you guys gather up the bundles of wood... You you strap them to your backpacks and are ready to proceed on. Um, 
However, Shadow suddenly looks at the other tree and points at it and says, um, Aw, nuts! What is it, Shadow? As you guys look, the light starts to glisten off of a taut, silky string that stretches all the way up to a cave up there. Is it like a fiber? Yeah, it's like a silk strand, like a spider's web, but much larger than Not any hard. spider's web you've ever seen. I'm going to acknowledge nature and see if I can determine what that string is from. I'm just going to yell shields and weapons and point to the tree. You recognize it instantly as spider web, and upon closer look, you can tell that it is frost spider web, which should be obvious given the terrain anyway. But that means that not only is this webbing sticky, but it can inflict cold damage as well. I Wait, tell everybody, don't touch the webbing. Where is it on the map? As which Ulf, direction is this going? As Ulf looks and listens, he can see that there is a huge cave up ahead that the string stretches towards, and he can hear the skittering of arachnid feet crawling out of the webbing towards whatever disturbed its trap. There's a spider coming! Defensive positions. We all have stuff we can do. Do we have a round or two before they're on us? Uh, you probably do, as you cannot see them yet. Um, so all of you can go ahead and, and prepare your defenses, but you will be preparing for next week because we are going to stop here as you know the frost spiders are approaching and we will join the battle next we, uh, next session on Dragons of the Frozen Seas. Thank you all for playing, and as always, good gaming.